So, 100,000 subscribers. That's, um, that's pretty awesome. That's pretty awesome. Thank you guys so much for that. Um, I just want to start this video off by saying I greatly appreciate all the support lately from um, everyone who's joined recently, everyone who's been here since the beginning or somewhere in the middle. I greatly, greatly appreciate every single one of you. And um, thank you very much for 100,000 subscribers. That's nuts. That's crazy. I've been literally racking my brain trying to figure out what, you know, what I wanted to do for a 100,000 subscriber video or whatever. Um, normally I'm able to, okay, I'll do this. And like, but for some reason I couldn't, I couldn't put my finger on exactly what I wanted to do. So here's what I'm gonna do. Number one, um, this Sunday, the 15th, is gonna be a super mega live stream extravaganza celebration. It's gonna be either either a 10, maybe even a 12 hour live stream this Sunday. So be on the lookout for that. I'll talk about it more as the weekend um, comes up. But this video, I want it to be somewhat special. A lot of people had suggested that I do, you know, a video kind of about my life and about where I came from, how I got into YouTube, all that kind of stuff. Um, and I thought that was a good idea. I thought that was a very good idea. A couple people said, draw my life. Mm, I'd rather, I'd kind of rather talk my life than, than draw my life. So that's kind of what we're going to do here today. So strap in, get comfortable. This is probably going to be a pretty long video. Uh, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about where I came from, how I got here, and what my plans are going forward, and what my plans have been up until now. So I'll try to get through the, um, the boring stuff quickly. I grew up in New Jersey, um, Jersey boy for life, and when I was a kid, I was, I was very into sports. I, was, I played baseball, um, I played soccer briefly, I played basketball mostly for a very, very long time. And um, when I was younger, I, I, I always knew that I wanted to be um, in the entertainment business in some way, shape, or form. I was that kid that was always like dancing around the kitchen and you know telling jokes and all that kind of crazy stuff. Um, I was quite a handful. As a little dank was a <laughs> little dank was a little handful. Um, but as I got older and I got into you know middle school, uh, I, you know I started making new friends and people who kind of shared my interest of of you know theater and music and all that kind of stuff in middle school. Um, it was, it came down to this one very specific day, and I, I, I will always remember this day, probably for the rest of my life. Um, the basketball tryouts and the theater program tryouts were on the same day. Uh, and I very much wanted to be on the basketball team. But I've been talking to my friends and stuff, and they were like, man, you know, you really, you really should try the, the theater programs, all kind of stuff. I was like, yeah, maybe, you know, I like that stuff, but, you know, I, I want to play basketball. Um, and I came home and I told my mom, I was like, mom, there's basketball tryouts tomorrow, uh, but there's also tryouts for the play, like the school play. I was like, I think I'm, I think I'm going to try out for the play. And my mom was like, okay, Chris. Like she even tells me to this day that she had, not that she had no faith in me, but, um, she said like, you know, I did not expect that to come out of your mouth. Cause I've been playing basketball for so long. I love basketball my entire life. And then all of a sudden I'm trying out for the, uh, for the school play. Long story short, um, I tried out for the play, and I got the lead. I was Daddy Warbucks in a in a theatrical presentation of Annie in eighth grade, which was a great experience. A great experience. Um, looking back, I probably wouldn't want to watch that back though, because that was like the first time I've ever sang in front of an audience or did anything in front of a really big audience. After that though, um, I was hooked. Whether it was school talent shows or, and you know, the school, the chorus, and all that kind of stuff. I was very much into the plays, and my senior year of high school, I was actually, I was the lead in the production of Suzical that we did. I was, I was doing all right. I was doing all right through, uh, through high school as far as the plays and all that kind of stuff went. And a lot of people ask me like, oh, if you were in, in the chorus and in the, um, in the plays and stuff, you must've been, you know, bullied in high, you must've been bullied in high school. And honestly, I was surrounded by such a great group of friends um, that shared the same, passion and excitement for the things that I did to where that was never really a problem for me. Um, so, and I get asked a lot, you know, I get bullied, what should I do? Just, I'm, I know I'm absolutely going off track. Surround yourself with people who, who share the same interest as you, people who make you happy, people who make you feel good about yourself. Getting back on track. So senior year of high school, um, me and my friend Jesse got contacted by one of the girls who actually went to our school was, um, was trying to get into the music business. And she's like, I need, 
background dancers uh, for my music career and stuff. And we were kind of like, mm, that could that could be kind of cool, you know what I mean? Um, so while we were still in high school, we would drive back and forth from Philadelphia to Jersey to Philly to Jersey at least three, four times a week. Uh, rehearsing with them, putting shows together, all that kind of stuff. Um, and it was getting towards the end of my senior year, and I told my mom, I was like, Mom, I don't think I'm gonna, I don't think I'm gonna go to college. And she's like, well, what do you want to do? I was like, I want to be an entertainer. She's like, well, what, you know, like, what does that mean specifically? I was like, I don't really know exactly what it means, um, but I want to do it. And I know I can do it, and I'm gonna do it. So... That's that. <laughs> and believe it or not, my mom was very, very supportive of that. Um, she knew that I was very passionate. She knew that I, I meant what I said. And she supported me 100%. So we had been doing that for, for a few months. And we're getting ready to, to graduate and all that kind of stuff. And we barely graduated, man. We were, we were, we missed classes. We missed school because we were so dedicated to to what we were trying to do you know what i mean like we legit almost did not graduate so we're getting down to the wire we're getting ready to graduate and we get contacted by uh, another one of our friends from out in philly who was working with a few you know local artists out in philly and they were like you know what we need some permanent uh performers we're gonna go on tour you know you get paid for rehearsals all this kind of stuff so hearing that right still in high school hearing that oh oh shit we're about to go out to philly and we're gonna get paid and all this kind of stuff and we were like absolutely blown away. So two or three weeks after I graduated high school, I moved out of my mom's house and uh, we moved to Philly. And we were thrust into this situation that um, looking back, I mean, it's one of those decisions that we made, you know, like that. We were young. We were kind of stupid without really thinking about it. Um, we did not end up getting paid. We did not end up going up uh, on tours, but we did get a lot of really cool experience. Um, kind of learning how the entertainment business worked like from the inside out instead of kind of just always watching it from the outside but we were doing it you know what i mean like we were all about it it didn't matter we weren't getting paid it didn't matter that um things that were promised to us didn't necessarily happen right away um i was 100 percent okay with being out there and doing what at the time i really loved to do as we went on a few months later we did a lot of great shows, did a lot of stuff, got a lot of experience uh, performing in front of people, in front of big crowds, all that kind of stuff. And me and a lot of the other guys there formed such such a really good friendship and a really good bond that one day we were kind of like, you know what? Why don't why don't we do like like a group? You know, why don't we do like like a music group or like a boy band, if you will, if you really want to call it that, which you probably can, um, and a lot of people do. But and it's something I'm not ashamed of. I'm absolutely not ashamed of it all because it was it was by far one of the best experiences of my life. Um, so we were like, you know what? Let's do it. Let's form a group. Listen and that. All this kind of stuff. We were called Odyssey. That was the name of our group. And right off the bat, we started uh, doing some really, really great stuff. We were we were a group for maybe maybe almost a year, maybe not even a year. And we auditioned for America's Got Talent, season two on NBC. And, and we made it. We made it to the top 25 on America's Got Talent season two. We were on the show, all that kind of stuff. If you want to go back and search for it, you can probably find it. Um, I'm not going to leave you the link. I'm going to make you look for that shit. <laughs> I'm going to make you look for that shit. Um, but it's there. And that was a great experience. And then, you know, a year, a year or so after that, we signed a contract with Six Flags. And we had our own stage. We had our own setup, all this stuff. We performed three times a day, five days a week at Six Flags, getting getting paid, getting performance experience. We opened for Danity Kane, we opened for Boys to Men, we opened for Flow Rider. We did a lot of just like really, really incredible stuff. Um and we were we were like really riding high for a long time. It was just one of the greatest experiences of my life by far. By far. Living out on my own, um, you know, being surrounded and working with with friends and people you trust. Um, and being able to do something that you love and something you're passionate about. Like, I, I, at that point, I really couldn't ask uh, for more. The unfortunate part, um, and it happens in a lot of groups, is that we weren't necessarily handled the best uh, from a management standpoint. We had managers, we had people that kind of not controlled our career, but, you know, helped 
push us forward, progress us forward. It got to a point where we were not progressing forward anymore. And um, we, like I said, we did some really great stuff and we, we really should have been, and I, this might come off kind of shitty, but like we really should have been more popular than we were. Uh, we we kind of felt like we hit a we hit a glass ceiling. We couldn't break through it, uh, and that started causing frustration. And a couple other things uh, got added to the mix. And I was actually the first one that decided that uh, I think it's time for me to step away from the group. This was 2010. Jesus, five years ago. It's crazy. Uh, this was 2010. I'm the kind of person who ne I never go into anything without a plan. Um, I know what I'm gonna do, how I'm gonna do it, why it's gonna work, and then I make it work. I had absolutely no plans when I left the group. And that was very unlike me because that was such a huge decision in my life. Um, but all I knew was that, I, okay, I need, to, I need to step away for a little bit. Um, I've been doing this since I was 18. At that time I was, what, 24. Um, just every day with the same guys, doing the same thing over and over, rehearsing, rehearsing, performing, rehearsing. Uh, you know, going to, going to meetings, going to the studio, record it, like, legit, back and forth, every day, every day, every day. And, um, I needed to, I needed to step away from that for a little bit. And I did that. I took some time away, but not too long after that, um, I got contacted by the producers that I actually worked with, um, when I was in the group. They're called the Lab Rats. They're incredible. They're two of the most talented, uh, creative geniuses as far as music goes that I've ever worked with. So they hit me up and they're like, you know, what are, what are you doing these days? I'm like, I don't know. You know, I'm kind of, I'm going to take some time. I'm going to figure out what I need to do, figure out what I want to do, just kind of relax um, and take it from there. They're like, well, if you ever want to work, you know, let us know. Music wise, like do my own solo music thing. I was like, mm, okay, you know, I'll think about it. And I thought about it. And I said, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to do it. Called him back and said, let's do it. Let's work on a solo project. Looking back, one of the, not stupidest, but um, one of the more rash decisions that I made that I probably shouldn't have at the time. Um, I was not ready mentally, physically, emotionally, like anything to put that much time and effort that's needed to really make something successful. I wasn't ready for that, but I did it anyway. Um... I recorded some songs, my, the first ever songs by myself, and like, like I liked it. I did a few performances by myself, and I'm like, you know, I, I kind of like this whole thing. Like, it sounds kind of shitty, but if anyone has performed or, or, or wants to be in the entertainment business, there's, there's a certain, there's a certain feeling that you get when you're in front of a crowd, in front of a stage, um, in front of a group of people, and the eyes are on you, and you're able to keep those eyes there. Um, that's a skill that it took me a long time to to really master, um, but I had, like I said, a lot of, I had a lot of great experience in the group, so I was able. I felt comfortable with that part of it, but just something else for me wasn't clicking. I wasn't 100% into it like I needed to be. So I said, you know what? Let me just kind of step back for a second. Let me go back to my original plan of no plan, uh, which in itself was stupid. But I said, you know what? I'm not ready for this right now. So let's 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 take some time. So now this is 2011. Um, after I tried some solo stuff, it was it was what it was. It was nothing nothing major, but I was able to get a little bit of experience by myself. Now at this time, there was a lot of not too great things going on personally. Um, I was in a relationship that was just bad, just very negative, um, not good for for anyone involved. You know, it, it was kind of like it was kind of like living with a roommate, but calling you know calling yourselves boyfriend and girlfriend. There was no you know, no connection anymore. It was kind of dying off. But at that point, we'd been together for like four or five years. And I kind of felt like I was stuck in that. Um, lo and behold, 2012, actually kind of late 2011 into early, mid-2012, I stumble upon YouTube. I created a YouTube channel called youtube.com slash dankops. Why did I call it dankops? Because my original plan looking back again, another stupid ass plan, was that I was just gonna do games about, or just videos about Call of Duty Black Ops. So I was like, Black Ops, my nickname has been Dank since I was a kid. Dank Ops, Black Ops, oh, it makes sense. It sounds great. That's why the channel is called Dank Ops, for, uh, for anyone that might have been wondering that. 
Now, I'd always had a, had a, a passion for, for video games. Even in the group, uh, when we were performing at Six Flags, we had our own trailer, and in the trailer we had a PS2 set up, and we would play in between uh, shows, in between sets, all that stuff. Going back to when I was a kid, I'd come home from school, you know, if I'm done hanging out with my friends or whatever, I would play video games. It's always, always been a hobby of mine. Always something that, for me, is all about just kind of... It's what I did at the end of the day, when the day was done, and I wanted to tune everything else out and just kind of relax, unwind. It's always been like that for me. And around this time, 2012, I really started to discover, wow, this whole video games on YouTube thing is kind of, it's starting to become pretty popular. Like, I might be able to do this. I had, um, obviously experience in front of a microphone. I had experience with uh, voice acting a little bit, which I didn't really touch on too much, but we can come back to that at another time. Um, during that time, also, after I kind of tried my hand at solo music for a little bit, I also started a voiceover business, which is what I've been doing up until recently, until I've been able to do this kind of a lot more, um, a lot more consistently. Anyway, so I got into YouTube, the YouTube gaming side. Now, a lot of people ask why. You know, why did I get into YouTube gaming? And honestly, I just, I wanted a platform to in some way, shape, or form continue doing the things that I had been doing all those years before. At the end of the day, and for some people, maybe, you know, this might not click for them and it might not make sense and they might not understand why I say it. At the end of the day, it's not about video games. It's not about, it's not really about videos. It's just about having a platform to speak, to get things off my chest and off my mind and to entertain, most importantly. That's what YouTube is for me. It's never, and again, this might sound weird, it's never been about, oh my God, I love video games so much that I wanna make that my career. It was never that. It was always like, wow, um, this is really cool. You know, I discovered that people do this. You just put video game footage up and you can kind of just talk over it and you know, people watch and, and listen to all kinds of stuff. Like, this is really cool. That's what it was. And, and I said, okay, you know, I want to use this as a platform to be able to continue to do what I'm doing. From there, I opened a vlog channel and I eventually opened a music channel, which is starting to, um, starting to come back into the mix very soon. The point of all this is that YouTube for me has always been a, an avenue to entertain, period. That's it. My goal as a kid, as an adult, up to this day, has been to be a um, an entertainer. To just be able to, whether it's sitting in front of a camera talking, whether it's sitting in front of a microphone talking, whether it's on a stage running and jumping around and singing and dancing, doing whatever, in front of how many people, um, or whether it's doing you know a film or, or a TV show, whatever, a web show, whatever it is. Um, that's what it's always been about for me. That is what I'm passionate about. That is why I feel I was put on this earth. To be able to create something for someone to either watch or listen to and be able to forget about their day, forget about what they're doing, forget about what's bothering them and just enjoy those few moments of it, whether it's a video or a song or whatever it is. Um, since day one, that's been the end all be all for me. And what I hope to do, what my aspirations are going forward, is to be able to turn this pretty decent YouTube success that we've had so far and that I, I owe to all of you for all your support to turn this into more of a mainstream career. Um, movies, TV, music, all that stuff. Um, to turn this platform of creating content for YouTube into, into a more, like I said, mainstream entertainment career. That's been the goal since I started, since before I started, since I was a kid, that's been the goal. And like I said, because of the support from all of you and we're starting to build up this, this whole brand and this whole situation, and um, you know, the bigger we grow, the more accomplishments we get, the more we achieve, uh, the easier that's gonna be. So that is, um, for the most part, that's long story short, the, uh, the story of the dank. And I think, I'm sure I probably left out a thousand things that I'm gonna think about later and, and kick myself for not mentioning. Um, but that's how I got from kid who loved entertaining, it, you know, to, to a guy who was just in a boy band <laughs> into, um, into where we are now. 
and uh, here here I sit in front of you just blabbing about my life because I just hit 100,000 subscribers, which is crazy. And I cannot thank you guys enough for all your support. So where do we go from here? Well, youtube.com slash dankops, the, uh, the 100k channel that you're currently viewing, will continue on as normal, as planned. youtube.com slash dankvlogs is going to be very more active going forward. That's my vlog channel. That's going to be more about life stuff, um, behind the scenes stuff, advice, just random skits and rants and all that kind of stuff. No, no, really, not too much video game stuff. Probably, probably no video game stuff on there. This is, you know, YouTube.com slash DankOps is more of the gaming, entertainment, nerd culture, stuff that I really enjoy as hobbies kind of thing. Dank Vlogs is, is kind of gonna, gonna step over that line into more of a personal uh, career goals, things that will occur outside of YouTube, all that kind of stuff. And YouTube.com slash Chris Danker Music, that speaks for itself. And that will also be updated in the very very near future. So, uh, I guess that's it. I guess that's it. That's the story. I appreciate you guys sticking around for this long ass video. Um, I wanted to do something different and, and, and somewhat special and kind of give you guys a more personal look at who I am, where I came from, what I'm doing, and, and more importantly, what I'm trying to do. And I truly hope that you all will continue to, to follow and, and support and stick with me on this journey. Because when I call it a journey, I call it that for a reason. Uh, this is not the finish line, by any means. Um, we are, when I say we're just getting started, believe me when I say it, because we haven't even scratched the surface of things that I really, really want to um, be able to accomplish, not only on YouTube, but beyond YouTube. So 100,000 subscribers, I cannot thank you guys enough. This is a great accomplishment. And from the bottom of my heart, I truly, truly do appreciate every single one of you. Thank you so much for, for liking and following and subscribing and supporting. And I hope that you all will continue to support going forward beyond where we're at now because we are not slowing down. We're not stopping. This is not where it ends. This is only the beginning. So I truly hope that you all will continue to support me um, be on YouTube and into the other things that I'm that I'm trying to accomplish and I would I would appreciate all that I would appreciate you guys uh, you know sticking with me and we've come this far but we've only just gotten started so thank you guys very much like I always say be sure to leave a like on this video subscribe now for more the takeover has begun people and we're just getting started thank you guys for watching and I'll see you soon